But big showing at E3 for WB Games. The game that we obviously want to talk about the most in terms of upcoming titles is Batman. We're going to get a little taste of that today with Kyle Moffat, the product manager at WB Games. Thank you so much, sir, for joining the show. Oh, thanks so much for having me. We do appreciate you coming on. Now, in terms of uh, origin, I know there's a ton of titles coming out for WB for the end of 2013 and uh, into 2014. Again, our producer is wearing his Batman shirt, so we got to ask first, what's Batman Arkham Origins all about? Uh, where's WB taking the franchise? This game is set years before Arkham Asylum, so you're going to learn a lot more about Batman as well as some of the characters in the game, some of the villains. So it's set on Christmas Eve about five, seven years before Arkham Asylum, and a mysterious character by the name of Black Mask has put a bounty on Batman's head. He's offered $50 million to kill the Batman on Christmas Eve. And this brings out some of the most vicious assassins in the Batman universe who are coming for Batman. Now, in terms of those vicious assassins, I know uh, Batman's really only as good as the villains he's facing sort of thing. We know Black Mask is going to be in it. We've seen, I believe, uh, Deadshot, Deathstroke, a little even shot of the Joker in one of our uh, our trailers. What are some of the other villains and heroes that uh, Batman will be teaming up with and punching in the face in uh, Origins? <laughs> well, we haven't announced all of the uh, yeah, of villains as yeah, yet, yeah. but uh, Bane is one of them, mm -hmm. as is, oh my goodness, what is her name? Catwoman? No. Ivy? No, um... He's loving on Catwoman. He, he, oh, wanted to, uh, he wanted to get a straight answer to you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I was just Harley in Quinn. Montreal at the studio and... I just saw her. I cannot for the life of me remember. This is going to bother me. And as soon oh, as I man. walk out, I'm going to be like, oh, it's Harley Quinn? No. No, no. no. It, it's not one of the, uh, the big names. It's not one of the big ones. Okay. Ooh, see? A little secret there, too. I know. Like I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know there was um, a bit of controversy, the idea that Rocksteady has not taken the uh, franchise for this title. And uh, there is the possible fear that some gamers have that it's not going to be the same sort of game. What do you say to that sort of, I would say, unfounded fear from what we've seen so far? I was really lucky. I got to see this game last August for the mm -hmm. first time, and I was at the studio and was taking into a theater and, and showing the game. And if I hadn't have been told that it wasn't Rocksteady working on it, I would not have known. Really? Like, okay. It looks that good. Mm -hmm. So people are going to really enjoy this game. It's the same Batman experience that is in Arkham Asylum that was approved upon in mm -hmm. Arkham City, and it's taken to that next level yet again because the guys from Montreal have added some really cool stuff. We'll get to that in just a second. I know we probably won't get a straight answer to you on this one. Is it possible that Rocksteady was freed up to work on a new next-generation Batman game? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> I, I honestly don't know what Rocksteady's Nothing working on. Yeah. So, um, you know, Montreal is working on it right yeah. now, and I just can't say enough good things about what they're doing. Absolutely. Now, in terms of some of those improvements you were discussing there, um, we'll start with combat. The previous Batman games, I think, had a really solid combat system. It was fluid. It was fun. Do we expect the same sort of thing for uh, this game, or what are some, I guess, of the improvements that we can expect? Absolutely. It is that same free-flow combat that people have known to love with the Arkham franchise. Um, in terms of improvements, Batman has some new gadgets that he can um, you know, use in combat, um, one of which is um, the Bat Claw, so you can string together two enemies, you can hang them in different ways, and it looks really cool. Awesome. Cannot wait for that. Um, I know, again, you kind of went into my next question about the gadgets. You said the back claw. Are we going to still see all the previous gadgets uh, from the uh, previous games? Yeah, you'll, you'll yeah. see definitely see uh, some of your favorites in there, as well mm -hmm. as some new ones that um, will have the fans pretty excited. And the only one you can tell us about is the back claw, though. At this that's point, only yeah. that's one of them, yeah. <laughs> but from what the videos we saw, it sounds like there's many different scenarios in which you can use that tool, though, from uh, what we saw so far. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you can, you know string two enemies together mm -hmm. so that you know brings them together knocks them silly and then you can swoop down and finish the job you can you know set um like shoot it into an explosive mm -hmm. kind of thing and yeah. bring that into the enemies as well so it causes an explosion taking out a couple of guys at, at one time so it's all about strategy and how you want to progress through the game so you'll think of ways that mm -hmm. i hadn't thought of was well, that that's what i was going to ask next in asylum the i thought the gadgets were very much used for specific purposes in city you really advanced on that. It was like you said, you used them in very interesting ways. Your imagination was really the limit. 
So you, uh, for Origins, you're taking that the step further where you're going to be using these gadgets again in ways that we could never expect? Well, yeah, you might look at mm -hmm. one particular scene in a level and think, I'm going to go about it this way. I'm going to go a little more stealthy, whereas me, I'm a run and gun. Mm -hmm. I like to make noise. Hey, come and get me. You want some? Come get yeah, some. Yeah. You're um, the Batman, of course. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So I'm going to make as much noise as possible, and I might choose yeah. to do that with uh, with my weapons. So. That's great, but you are going to facilitate both sort of styles of play, even in terms of uh, how the gadgets can be used. and Absolutely. It's all about way. the player and how they want to go through. Cannot wait for that. I know a little bit of what we've seen is actually some vehicles and the introduction in uh, the Batman series. They've only, I think we already saw the Batwing in one of the videos. We heard about the Batwing. Yeah, yeah. I know it's going to be involved in some way in uh, Origins. Batman, of course, has his amazing vehicles. Uh, what will their role be? In uh, Batman, of what you can say, obviously. Yeah, with, with the uh, with the Batwing, it's going to help you um, travel a lot faster across the Arkham world because mm -hmm. this game is a lot larger than Arkham City, which that in itself is kind of hard to wrap your head around yeah. because Arkham City was massive, yep. and the fact that they've taken this and expanded upon it in a really large way. Mm -hmm. I can't say how big, but I do know <laughs> how big it is. And when I yeah. was told, I'm like, holy, are you guys kidding me? Like, that's amazing. <laughs> Um, and so that'll help you if you want to, you know, fight your way across, you can, but if you want to, for the sake of speed and, you know, get to your next mm -hmm. quest or mission, then you absolutely can call in the Batwing and, and fly across at any time. Not a hundred percent sure on that. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Good, good one there, David. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice little jab in there. Well, I, again, I can't believe it. It's going to be that much bigger than, uh, than city of what you're saying so far. It's still going to have that level of density. Cause I love that in city that you turn every corner and all of a sudden it was an uh, obscure uh, comic book reference of a character. We can expect that for uh, Origins coming up? 100%. Awesome. You're also going to see some new locations that haven't been in an Arkham game before. So you'll see the Batcave. You'll get to go through and play actually part of it in the Batcave. Mm -hmm. You'll get to see uh, the Gotham Police Department because um, uh, Commissioner Gordon, he's not actually a commissioner at this point. He's still detective or deputy gordon mm -hmm. so, or whatever yeah. yeah so you know you're gonna go to the gotham police department which you haven't done before too and there's other new locations awesome. which we'll be revealing um as we get closer to release date so a lot of places to go and uh, fans of batman are gonna be like oh wow that's in the game that's awesome so uh, those are the, always the best moments when yeah. you see those little tiny uh instances that make you feel like the game's just made for you absolutely adore that now, um, you talked about how the game is set, uh, I believe, five or seven years, is what you said yeah, before? Yeah, between, uh, five, between and five and seven, seven years. years yeah. uh, the previous two titles. What does that mean for the character of Batman and his villains? Because I know you are, um, the game Origins is taking a slightly different take on what we know of Batman. And uh, yeah, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so for Batman, it's a much grittier Batman. Mm -hmm. um, he isn't as refined as he is today. So. He's a lot more vicious, and you see that in his combat style. You see that with the way he's handling his enemies. He's he's really angry, and that really comes through. And even just the look of him, like you see mm -hmm. he's got like a 5 o'clock shadow on him, <laughs> which I thought was awesome when I saw that for the first time because, you know, he is that much more gritty in this one, and it just that really added to it for me. Does that also affect um, the gameplay, this new focus on grittiness? Are we going to get perhaps uh, more intense or visceral interactions? Because it already was pretty visceral in City, so that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. It might be uh, difficult to amp it up, but you're saying you want to do that with the narrative. Is that going to affect the gameplay? It might. It, it might. might. Oh, yeah. okay. I like that one a little bit. I know that there are some changes. You already talked a lot about this. Is uh, Detective mode is getting some big changes, and I thought that's a really innovative way to... Um, it was introduced in the first two games, and it works really, really well for it. How is it being changed, and uh, why did the team kind of decide to take a, a different look on it, or more um, involved look, perhaps, yeah. Well, this was one of the ways that they really wanted to put their own spin on it, and it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, the demo that we showed at E3 involved a helicopter crash, and basically using detective mode, he is reconstructing that helicopter crash, and it, it's so hard to explain, <laughs> like, I strongly suggest you guys go out and watch the uh -huh. trailer or watch the demo if you can, because it is just so cool how Batman recreates this crime scene and works its way back and figures out exactly what's happening. Because, oh man, like when I sat through that demo for the mm -hmm. first time, I got goosebumps watching it. And you know, when you've been playing enough games and working on enough games... It's not often that that happens, and when it does, you're, oh, man, I can't wait to play this. And that's exactly how I felt watching that scene. So really cool.
Now, in terms of um, you talked about there seeing the helicopter crash and reconstructing, I thought that was one of the perhaps issues with the other detective modes in the other games. You'd press a button and you just know everything that happened. Sort of in the end uh, for this uh, for Origins, it's not going to be like that anymore, right? There's oh. going to be some real sort of investigation, right? Yeah, no, yeah. this one is a lot deeper in terms of detective mode. You're going to do a lot more than just, you know, walk over and move the camera yeah. around and, oh, I found it. Okay, great. Then, you know, move on. Mm-hmm. No, this one's going to have you do a lot more. And um, like it, it looks fantastic. Oh. Cannot wait for that. Now, in terms of the overall narrative, I know it's a new take, it's a much grittier take. Is Batman's story going to be along a more linear path? Because I thought in City you opened it up a little bit more than Asylum. Uh, For this iteration, are you taking it, exploding it even further? Will we have sort of uh, mission choices that will affect the game? I'm just wondering, in Origins, the player choice, how will that affect the uh, experience? Well, there's several ways you can go through. Like, you can follow the main storyline, but there are enough side missions um, and contracts that you can go through along the way. So. It is going to be a very deep experience. Um, even if you just want to go through and play that main mission, like it's long enough and it's deep enough mm-hmm. that you'll really enjoy it. But there are there are there is enough on the side that you want to go through and find out a little more about the villains and why they're after you. And that seems uh, really natural and fluid, right? When you are discovering these alternative sort of paths and these side missions. Yeah, and as you're going through, you know, something will happen. You're like, oh, wait a second here. I, I'm going to put my main mm-hmm. quest on hold because I want to know what this is all about. And so you go off in that direction, and yeah, you're rewarded. Well, I know Dave and I have spent countless hours gathering and solving the Riddler trophy, <laughs> everything involved in that. Might have and, to you two a couple. Yeah, of we might too, have to do so. a few of those too. <laughs> Ideally, I got to say they got to be back for this one, right? Oh, oh, hands in the air. He's shrugging, folks. Know. A shrug on this show means a definite yes. But <laughs> <laughs> um, we, okay. we got a lot of time between uh, now and October 25th, so there there's we go. still a lot of information we're going to share. There we go. There's and little... speaking of the, of the missions, too, we're going to have, um, like we did in uh, Asylum and City, have the, the Predator missions and the challenge maps, too, as well, or...? Uh, we'll wait to. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait. Yeah. To see, yeah, we're not okay. quite there yet. And again, thank you so much for talking to us about Ben. We really do appreciate that. Um, for you, because you've obviously seen the game in a lot of capacities, what is perhaps one moment that you could share with our audience that you think really encapsulates the uh, Batman Arkham Origins experience of what they're going to get? The one moment for you that kind of that sticks out that you you want to share with others? Wow. Um... Jeez, because I've seen quite a bit of it already, yeah. um, and <laughs> there's stuff that I can't talk new, about. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but um, in in terms of what I saw, yeah, that new detective mode yeah. is just ridiculously good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I don't know if you guys had a chance to watch the trailer, but mm-hmm. the scene where Bane grabs Batman from the elevator and just kind of throws him around like he's mm-hmm. a rag doll, yeah. And then you have that interaction with the Joker. Yeah. Man, I was watching that, and um, even when I was at the Montreal studio, I saw a little bit more Mm -hmm. than what's been revealed. And even when it ended, I'm like, guys, no, you can't end it now. I want to see more. Like, (laughs) oh, it's so there you go. Those are the characters you got to watch for again. Joker's going to be in this, so you're obviously going to want to play this game. In terms of what else we know about WB coming in uh, at the end of uh, 2013 and 2014, there were two specific uh, other titles that really, really caught my eye. Mad Max and uh, Dying Light. We only saw a few second trailer uh, for what's going on with Mad Max. Let's start with that game. What's it about? Obviously, people are familiar with uh, the Mad Max mythos, but uh, what's WB doing with that title? Well, we've been people have been asking for years. You know, when are we going to get a Mad yeah. Max game? And we finally brought one out. It's open world, which is very exciting. Um, we're bringing a lot of that Mad Max universe mm-hmm. into the game. So. There are, I believe, 50 cars from the Mad Max world from the movies that you'll be able to play in the game, drive around in. Um, But basically, um, Max's interceptor has been stolen, and he's trying to get it back. And along the way, he is collecting parts. He engages in vehicle combat. He engages in physical combat Mm -hmm. to try and rebuild his car. How close is uh, what you guys are planning? How close is this game to the uh, the movies in question? Uh, it's completely separate. It's com- oh yeah, yeah, so it's more. Um, it's not following yeah. the uh, story at all. It is a, an original story, so it is a good way for people to get primed for the mm-hmm. movie that is going to be coming out. Um, you know, fans of the original Mad Max; those movies just got released on Blu-ray mm-hmm. this year, so. 
it's slowly starting to build up that franchise again, and and hopefully, you know, our game will be the next greatest step in uh, in the franchise. Well, there's a lot. Uh, whenever you're doing a post-apocalyptic game, there's already so much work in that medium. It's difficult not to be compared to it. So, from what you've seen so far, what is making uh, Mad Max stand out from you know the fallouts and all those sort of games that have that huge sort of calling? I, I was a big fan of the physical combat that we saw at E3. Mm -hmm. um, there was one moment where um, he, Max kind of exploded one of his enemies, and just watching the various parts fly around, <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty cool. So there you go. That's it's just going to be that much more visceral sort of thing. It's, it's going to be uh, yeah. It's going to be pretty visceral. It's going to be pretty edgy. Um, definitely one for the older crowd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't scribble nuts, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, no. It um, it is one, and you know, people who grew up, guys like me who grew up with the Mad Max franchise and really enjoyed the movies, are definitely going to enjoy the game. And I do know that um, one of the more recent pieces of news with Mad Max is. After uh, public opinion swayed it one way, it looks like an Aussie voice is coming in. I right? was wondering yeah. if you guys are going to ask. Yeah, what's about the uh, what's yeah. the story on that? The fill in our listeners, perhaps who aren't aware. <laughs> um, well, there were concerns with um, you know fans of the Mad Max franchise. They wanted Max to have an Australian accent, and our developer Avalanche Studios confirmed that this week mm -hmm. that Max will indeed have one. So. Rest assured, people. <laughs> they made a huge petition, and there was ridiculous outrage of the small seconds that we heard that it wasn't <laughs> like that. But again, you got it, and it looks absolutely amazing. The other title I really want to focus on, we've seen a little bit of, is Dying Light, the parkour zombies, is how I kind of describe it to other people. Is that an accurate estimation yeah, of uh, that sort of very name? good yeah. so uh, what's, explanation what's, of that What's game? the game about? Because it looks, it's very, it looks amazing. It's being developed by uh, Techland Studios. Um, so, you know, they did the Dead Island mm -hmm. franchise, and uh, basically you're running for your life um, in this one, and you do use parkour to get around. Um, during the day, you know, zombies are still out and about, and you can move around a lot more freely. Mm -hmm. um, they're just a little lethargic and may not be as tough, but once that sun goes down, look out. Um, you know, all hell's going to break loose, mm -hmm. literally, because the more vicious zombies are going to be out, and you've really got to be strategic about how you're getting around and where you're going. So you're going to, you know, use parkour to get around, but also to <laughs> try and survive. And yeah, can you uh, maybe go a little more into that of using parkour to survive? Because it is, unless you see the visuals, it is a little hard to explain because it's, it's an amazing thing to actually see. Yeah, so, you know, you'll be running away from a crowd of zombies who are, you know, trying to rip you into pieces, mm -hmm. but, you know, you can scale, run up the side of a building, jump from sh the roof of uh, different shacks and, you know, trying to get away um, you know, jumping through a, an open mm -hmm. space like a window or something, um, all in this free flow movement, which is really great. So you're like you're not really breaking stride, um, like it's not very choppy at all. It's very yeah. natural. So that's what we're looking for, right? That it is. If you're making a game like that, that's really fluid, going from a uh, area to area in that sort of way. In terms of um, violent interactions that you're going to have with the zombies, uh, can we look forward to that in Dying Land, or how's that going to work? Um, yeah, I, if you're into uh, some violent interactions with zombies, <laughs> you definitely won't be disappointed. There Let's you go. That's that. all you need for that. And I know there were some other uh, titles that we didn't focus on, some that are more geared, that don't have quite as much vicious violence in it, that are still uh, worthy games to discuss. I know uh, you mentioned a few. Let's go over those again at E3. Yeah, uh, Scribblenauts Unmasked, a mm -hmm. DC adventure. Um, very excited about that one. So fans of Scribblenauts will absolutely love this one because Maxwell has um, somehow entered the DC universe and he will use his magical notebook <laughs> to help the superheroes thwart the villains. And it's the same great Scribblenauts experience. So mm -hmm you think of something that can help solve that puzzle, then you will create it with your notebook. It'll come to life on screen. And um, yeah, it's with the DC superhero. So you can not only interact with the superheroes, and I think we've got 20 plus versions of Superman, okay. which is really fun, as well as um, you can create your own superhero too. So lots of fun there. So it's that great scribble nuts fun and imagination but now we can use uh, the superheroes we can make before. Absolutely. Exactly. And what are the titles uh, we're showcased at E3? So I know there's, I know the display at E3 had the most amazing Lego mosaic. I, I've, it was incredible. It was like 12 feet high and yeah. it was all these different, I had to get close to see it was actually Lego. So I do imagine 
Got some pretty big Lego titles. Coming. <laughs> yeah, and it's too bad that the listeners don't know or can't see what we're talking about because that mural was actually created with those little tiny mm-hmm. one piece. Yeah. Um, yeah. The it, ones you lose. Those are the ones. Apparently patients. it took a month to build. So yeah, it, it, was, it was phenomenal. But um, yeah, Lego Marvel um, superheroes. Mm-hmm. So excited about mm-hmm. this one because it is the Marvel Universe coming together with the great Lego games that people have been um, knowing to expect. So you're going to play in a Legoized version of New York City. So you'll see iconic locations like the Statue of Liberty, Times Square, Grand Central Station, as well as, you know, famous um, Marvel Mm -hmm. locations like Stark Tower. So Professor X's Mansion. Um, There are more than 100 characters that you'll be able to unlock in the game and play with, which is awesome if you're a Marvel fan. Mm -hmm. Everyone from Spider-Man, Wolverine, the Fantastic Four. um, Yeah, there's so many (laughs) characters to name. And um, one thing that's really exciting about this one is all our Lego games have had minifigs. Like the characters are Mm -hmm. known as minifigs, but... With this game, we actually have big figs this time. So, like, the Hulk. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's really hard to make the Hulk a mini fig. So, <laughs> he's going to be a big fig. And the big figs are awesome because they're that much stronger. They can pick up cars mm-hmm. and use them as weapons. They can, you know, help clear the path for you. And it's going to be so much fun. For though, yeah, if you haven't played or picked up any of the recent Lego games because you think, oh, they might be perhaps childish, there are, first of all, some of the highest reviewed games of, you know, the generation of games coming out. And it's a sort of fun that you really can't find in other places. For people who grew up playing Lego, you get a chance to actually control these characters. And now we get to play as these superheroes again. It's from what you're describing, at least, and what we played in the previous games. Sounds like a great title to be a part of. Yeah, and it's that same great Lego experience. And one of the neat things about Lego is that it has something for everyone, mm-hmm. whether it's a character that you grew up in, you know, watching on TV and loving, or just the humor. Like, you know, there's things that the characters will do that will have the kids laughing, but at the same time, they'll crack jokes that the adults get. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's really something for everyone. Absolutely. Well, it seems like you guys are really taken you know, the superhero, the the powerful, amazing superheroes that you have and really implementing them well uh, into games. We're going to see, again, more of these superheroes reaching our consoles next to uh, 2013, 2014. I, I sure hope so. You know, <laughs> yeah. Warner Brothers, we are blessed with some mm-hmm. amazing franchises, and um, it's great to see some of them come to life in video game form because, you know, you, you grow up watching Batman movies or cartoons and, you know, when you're old enough to play games and afford to buy your own games like that, you know, the first thing you want to do is play as Batman. And yeah. we're giving people that opportunity, which is awesome. Absolutely. Cannot wait for it. Big thanks. Kyle Moffat, project manager, product manager. Rat- oh, let's try that again. Big thanks to Kyle Moffat, product manager at WB Games. A lot of products we talked about today. The uh, biggest focus was, of course, Batman Arkham Origins. When is that expected on uh, store shelves with systems? 1025 worldwide on PS3, 360, and Wii U. Not and, the... Oh, oh, and then we also have Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate coming oh, yeah, to yeah, of course, PS yeah. Vita as well as the Nintendo 3DS. So first time that Batman's coming to handheld, which is awesome. Again, if you want Batman, if you want to experience these amazing games that were iterated on in Asylum, made that much better in City, and now we're getting the pinnacle of what these games are. You can get it on whatever system you have. Make sure you check it out. Andy Burkowski, VGS.